bike riders ride tens of thousands of kilometers each and every year. And of course, part of that is keeping comfortable. So I'm gonna take a look around the pros bikes to find out exactly how they stay comfortable, both with custom mods as well as off the shelf mods. Come on. The bike saddle, of course, a vital piece of every cyclist's armory, and there is a huge variety of them available, hundreds in fact. And this one from Prologo has tiny little bits of rubber on them, which are said to actually dampen vibrations whilst riding along. So essentially, they just compress a small amount and get you to the finish or the end of your ride in a little bit of extra comfort. Now, one way that some riders do find a little bit of extra comfort is by using a saddle with a channel through the middle here to relieve a little bit of pressure, well, down there, let's face it. So that's becoming a more and more popular choice in the Pro Peloton. So this rider, they've actually got tucked away underneath the tops of the handlebars here, some extra little gear shifters mounted into the Shimano Di2 9150 levers. So you can just ride along in ease and comfort and just play around with those levers. Well, you want to use some aerodynamic handlebars, but you don't really like the, well, quite rattly feel you can sometimes get from them because they are very, very stiff. So check out what Steve Cummings has done. He's just wrapped his joystick handlebar tape all the way in. So he's got a little bit of extra comfort when riding on the tops. So not strictly comfort whilst on the bike. Well, it is on the bike, but you're not gonna use one in a race. It's one of these, a cooling vest. Just saw these on, with Team Dimension data. And basically they put these inside of a freezer overnight. And then traditionally before time trials or before a really, really hot stage, riders will be seen wearing one of these. You wouldn't want to race in it. It's pretty heavy, probably, about two kilos, so I'm just about managing to hold it up. So these pouches, they're actually filled up with gel. No, 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 not energy gel, that would just be daft, but rather gel which turns solid or near enough solid once they're put in the freezer. Certainly for comfort, that. I'm here with the Trek bike of Bauke Molimer of Trek Segafredo, and I've just been taking a look at the elbow pads here on his time trial bars. And whilst they are decked with some really, really lovely carbon fiber holders, the actual pads themselves are quite roughly cut and applied uh, bits of kind of neoprene-like material or foam. Now, presumably, Bauke actually likes to have a kind of a longer cup, really, for his forearms when he's in the, down there in that aerodynamic position. And then also interesting is this, he's using some of the older style DI2 controls. So rather than the kind of thumbs on the ends of the handlebars, he's got the buttons here on the tops of the handlebar. And if I thought that those elbow rests on Bauke Molimer's bike were long, then check out these on Fabio Fellini's bike. They are absolutely, well, they're probably half the length of my forearm there or thereabouts. So he obviously likes to have a lot of well, control over the handlebars when he's riding. Another way to increase comfort on your bike is to use some wider rims. Why is that? Well, then you can get away with using wider tires, which have shown in tests to actually be more comfortable when riding along because you can ride them at a lower pressure, but actually still continue at the same speed because ultimately you're taking in the shocks a little bit better and not being bounced around all over the road. So these new Bontrager Aeolus Triple X 6, 60 mil deep, but also really quite wide in comparison to wheels we were seeing, say, five years ago. For those of you who've been watching my pro bikes, you may well have spotted and remembered that I have noticed some riders using extended width pedals. When I say extended width, it's actually not the pedal itself which is extended, it's how they're positioned on the bike. So in the case of these pedals on Nizolo's bike, they're actually using a longer axle. So in that way, they're gonna be further spaced out from the bottom bracket. And that's gonna allow them to have a more comfortable position. It's not the most common thing we see, but we do see riders from time to time doing it. So it could be because they've got a wider pelvis than, well, the standard that there is out there, but who knows? Anyway, there's a few riders of Trek who are doing it. I'm here with the bike of Fabio Aru of UAE Team Emirates, and he's got himself some double wrapped handlebar tape. So he is using a one piece bar and stem, which do tend to offer a bit of a harsher ride because they are certainly stiffer. So to give him a little bit of extra comfort, he's wrapped them there with that white bar tape. Interestingly, he's the only rider on the squad I can see using white handlebar tape. But Fabio, tell you what, for extra big thumbs up points, if you had a white matching saddle, it would look even better. 
Now, in order for a rider to get ultra comfortable on their bike, the position is vitally important. Take, for example, these stems from Pro. This one comes in 125 millimeter length, which is pretty standard, but also comes in 126 millimeters. So believe it or not, Thibaut Pino, between his two different bikes, he can change those stems in just one millimeter just to get his position absolutely dialed in for the different characteristics of each bike. Then on the flip side, he's actually reduced reduce the length of stem by one millimeter on his air code bike. And this bike, of course, is designed for the flatter stages, the sprint stages, that kind of thing. So the geometry is gonna be different, obviously, and also the dimensions of the frame is likely to vary slightly too. Possibly, it's just gonna offer him a little bit extra comfort. Check out this little rubber elastomer inside of the seat post on this Lapier air code belonging to Thibaut Pino. So that is just gonna take out a little bit of the extra buzz you do feel, in fact, coming in from a aerodynamic frame because they are pretty stiff indeed. I do like things like this because they're subtle yet comfortable. The riders here of Group Amar FTJ, they have the option with these Pro Missile Evo handlebars to have a huge amount of adjustability. Check out all of the holes in the tri bar extensions for you to be able to shorten and lengthen them to your desired requirements. And then the actual uh, pads here for your forearms, they can be adjusted obviously up and down as well as flipped around so you can get further or shorter depending on your requirements too. Then if we look at the base bar, well, you can narrow and widen the extensions to your heart's content. I think things like this are absolutely fantastic. Topping it off then, which is something we don't normally see that often on many time trial bikes, is in fact handlebar tape. Because, well, let's face it, like I've already said, it's not the most comfortable discipline, but if there is a little bit of respite from the leg burning, lung burning pain that you're gonna endure, well, at least put some white handlebar tape on for that extra bit of comfort. Now, if you're looking for a customized time trial, comfortable setup, then look no further than the bike of Steve Cummings of Team Dimension Data for some inspiration. Because he's got this setup, which is built in conjunction with Envy, but he's also got some drag to zero armrests here for his forearms. So when he's in his aerodynamic position, he's going to be in the most comfortable position, but still aerodynamic. So what's so special about them then? Well, check out this. One of the foam pads is different from the other. They're both held on in place with some insulation tape, which to be perfect honest is incredibly common across all levels of cyclists because they do have a tendency just to move around especially when you're just pulling back on those extensions a small amount but I absolutely love the fact that he's got two different materials on there and underneath there is also just a section of what looks to be a little bit of helicopter tape something like that just to keep them in place a little bit. Now, one of the reasons behind those different pads could well be the fact that one of the actual armrests itself is fractionally behind the other, probably about half a centimetre or so, probably five or six mil. So presumably, he has a tendency just to ride slightly off centre, I imagine. Uh, if I see Steve, I will ask him and try and find out. A nice way of improving comfort on a time trial bike that you could easily try at home, in fact, is to apply a strip of handlebar tape to your saddle. This is what Bjorg Lambrecht has done of Lotto Sedal. So he's taken a strip of his lizard skins bar tape, applied it from about the center of the saddle, and then run it almost to the nose so that basically he can stay in his same position and get more comfortable because he's not gonna be constantly having to readjust his position and sitting awkwardly on the nose of the saddle. This split nose saddle on the bike of Victor Campanas, it comes from a company called Adamo who make them. And traditionally these were spotted on the bikes of triathletes and time trialists, hence why it's on a time trial specialist bike. So how do they work exactly? Well, they both relieve pressure, which is obviously quite important down there, as well as allowing you to actually open up your hips slightly more than a standard saddle can, or at least that's the thinking behind it. We are starting to see them creep more and more into the pro peloton, both on standard road bikes too. I'm here with the bike of Luis Angel Mate of the Cofidis Solutions Credits team, and he has got something really well done on his bike, and it's really, really subtle for a little bit of extra comfort. So, on the drops of the handlebars, 
traditional single layer of bar tape. Then on the tops, and this is where it's been done so neatly, he's got a double wrap there just to take out a bit of the shock. Personally, if I'm ever asked to do this on someone's bike, I dread it because I just can't ever seem to do it correctly and neatly. So I'm going to ask the mechanics just how exactly they've done that. Then, if I move over to the bike of Kenneth Van Bilsen, the Belgian, he's got the traditional two layers, both tops and on the bottoms of the bars here. Now, he's from Belgium, so he's used to the cobblestones. I reckon that's probably why he's done it. There we are, some cheeky little hacks in there, as well as some off-the-shelf methods for you to get more comfortable on your bike. Now, mine, personally, well, it just has to be the simple double wrap of the bar tape. Nice and easy, extra comfort, winner all day long. Let me know yours, though, down there in the comments section. Remember, as well, to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big old thumbs up. Tell everybody about it. Also, don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, where we have a whole heap of goodies. Oh, and let's not also forget about Dan Lloyd. He is doing a Vuelta review every single day over on our Facebook page. So make sure you check that out. There's a link to it in the description below so you don't miss anything that's going on in the Vuelta. And now for another great video, how about clicking down, hit there.